Right, hands up who meditates regularly. Right. Right. Meditation's a fantastic thing. It has so many health benefits. I mean, just regular deep breathing, for instance, is actually very good for the, the cardiovascular system, but it also calms the mind. But something I have been particularly interested in uh, that, that really lends it a lot of support and, and how it affects us on a physical level is how this how it affects the brain. And there's been a number of, of scientific studies now showing some of the physical impact of meditation in the brain. So, I mean, for example, we now know that people who meditate regularly over a long period of time have thicker heads. No, nah, I'm, really, I'm really only kidding. Not quite thicker heads. But the, the part of the brain at the front here, the prefrontal cortex, it is actually more dense in, in neural connections, so in neural connections being the way that the brain wires itself from one brain cell, one neuron to the next, and, and the density of wiring increases almost like you have two trees close to each other that are reaching across and the branches are touching each other and you get a growth, an explosion of growth of many, many more of, of these, these branches, so that's an increase in density of neural wiring. And we know that meditation actually causes this type of thing. It's actually referred to as neuroplasticity. So a number of studies are now showing some of the, these excellent benefits, not just in the prefrontal cortex, but, but in other uh, significant areas of the brain. I mean, even, for example, compassion meditation, uh, uh, Tibetan Buddhist meditation, as well as impacting the brain here. In fact, particularly on the left-hand side. It's a meditation called the Loving Kindness Compassion Meditation, where you, you wish people loving kindness and freedom from suffering, among a few other, other you know, uh, intentions throughout that meditation. But you cultivate a sense of compassion and you get an increase in neural density, neural wiring in the, the front prefrontal cortex on the left hand side here but also in deeper areas of the brain that govern you know empathy in particular an empathy center of the brain grows similarly in the same kind of way through this increase in, in neural density so these are structural effects in the brain uh, in response to to really relaxing I mean many some scientists Her Herbert Benson at Harvard actually calls the physiological response to meditation, the relaxation response. There's nothing really fancy about meditation. You don't have to sit you don't have to sit cross legged, you don't have to be member of any particular religious persuasion. In a sense, all you really have to do is breathe and relax for a period of time. It might just be a couple of minutes, it might be five minutes. It's really that simple. It's about just Relaxing, and we're not trying to block thoughts out of our mind. Where you can just be aware of your thinking, because the moment you become aware of your thinking, you're not thinking anymore, because you're aware of the thinking. So you're no longer kind of gripped with the thought. So that simple act, on a regular basis, perhaps every single day, can have these structural, physical effects on the brain, which actually help us to generate, if it's compassion meditation, help us to feel more empathy and compassion. If it's a a, a basic, typical breathing meditation, then it helps us to, be, to pay attention more, it helps us to be more able to concentrate, more in control even of our thinking and our emotions, and also feeling more, more relaxed. But another thing that, that interests me is, is that meditation has an effect on the ageing process, and there's been a number of, of studies into this, but the best one that I'm aware of was actually published by, by Herbert Benson's group, group at uh, Harvard, where they took experienced and also novice meditators. So let's look at the novice meditators, for example. And over an eight-week period, doing a simple relaxed meditation, and some people during that program would, would be using yoga or tai chi or qigong because all of them induce the relaxation response, the physiological response to meditation or, or relaxation. And they took blood samples at the beginning and end of an eight-week period of, of daily meditation. Incredibly, those who hadn't, who weren't seasoned practitioners of meditation, meditation had impacted 1,561 genes. I mean, isn't that extraordinary that we now understand there's a genetic effect? And if you think of the genes uh, like, you know, those Christmas tree lights you get that flash on and off and on and off, it's not a perfect analogy, but it's close enough for, for, for this, these purposes then if you think of your genes as little light bulbs that switch on and off, then what they found is 874 genes switched on and 687 switched off. And if you look at individually what these genes actually mean, uh, overall what you were finding was a slowing down in the rate of 
you know, oxidative stress and, and cellular decay in the body. In other words, the body was slowing down in the rate that it, that it was aging. So here we're now beginning to find, even in, in, in the medical journals, some evidence that meditation even slows the aging process. I mean, who would believe that I'm 91 years old? Eh? <laughs> well, obviously, looking at me, I'm clearly not 91, but eh, you can't help but put a wee joke in here and there. So uh, anyway, if you don't meditate, why not give it a try? You know, at the very least, it's going to help you to relax. So good luck with it.